Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? Again, here I am and excited to be with you. I love doing this, so I hope that you will enjoy making the projects that I come up with for you. I brought to you the fourth installment on my Easter week of treat boxes. This I call the Tea and Cookie Bunny Box. The bunny is the inspiration. We do have a bunny here in the house and it is a roaming bunny. So I love anything with bunnies on it. You can see on the inside here, I have a section in the back that has two tea bags. Here they are. And then I have a front section that has a bunny cookie. Isn't it cute? So I'm going to show you how to make this box. This front flap tucks behind this circular um, bunny image and that's what keeps it closed. You can also use a magnet if you'd like to um, also keep it closed. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Easter Friends this whole week for all my projects and I pair them with different die sets. Um, I'm using the layering circles this time and I'm using the largest scallop and the largest circle. So those are the two that I've used for my main focal image. I'm also using the banner pick a punch for this happy Easter sentiment that we're gonna be doing in a few minutes. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna move these dies, stamp set out of the way, and we can go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get everything together. We're gonna put our cookie, which I purchased these cookies at Target. They have sugar cookies for the different holidays, so you can get them. I think they're $1.99 in the US at Target. So they're usually in the seasonal section or the bakery area of your local Target. So let's go ahead and open this up. Sorry for the crinkling sounds. And we're gonna place it, this is um, our envelopes. These are the clear envelopes. So you can purchase these from our um, catalog and we're going to go ahead and put the cookie in there and then I'm going to go ahead and close it and seal it tight. So I want, I'm going to try and section this little bunny so that the ears are even. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this backing off. We'll get rid of this and all the little crystal sugars in a minute as soon as I seal this. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and bring this back. And I'm just going to stick it straight across and that seals your little bunny in its pouch. And I will wipe my area off here so that we don't have anything. So there's that. And then here's our little tea bags. I use the lemon ginger. I really like that tea. And so I think lemon goes really well with sugar cookies. So that's that. So let's go ahead and stamp on our circle and our banner piece. And we're going to be using our Memento black ink. I'm going to grab a scrap piece. I'm going to place my circle on it and bring my bunny in here. And I'm going to rub my ink pad over the top. And then I'm going to pounce it up and down on top. Just helps to deposit the ink a little easier. And I'm going to move my bunny to this right hand side here of my circle. And press him down. So there he is, super cute, isn't he? We're gonna clean that in a minute, but let's go ahead and stamp our words on this piece of um, polished pink. I'm gonna ink up my words, and we are gonna stamp our Happy Easter on this scrap piece here of um, polished pink. Perfect. We're doing good so far, right? Let's go ahead and clean the stamps now. And that is all the stamping. I'm gonna do a little bit of fast coloring and I'm also going to um, punch the ends of this banner. Slide it into the punch here. That looks good. All 
All right, so there's our Happy Easter. Set that over here on top of my box. We are going to cut out, well not cut out, color in, sorry, <laughs> our bunny. And I'm using Smoky Slate. It's very quick. We're gonna use the dark Smoky Slate and we're gonna go over all of these dark marks that the um, artist has given us on our stamped image here. So we're just going over that area. I just want to avoid the eye and I wanna avoid that little circle area of the eye. But all of the rest of this bunny, I'm gonna fill in with the dark smoky slate following these darker areas that the artist has shaded. And I am going outside of the lines here to form kind of how the artist did that the bunny is kind of furry and it kind of gives it that illusion, right? I'm gonna also go down this ear section and do a little hair on his head, super cute. So now we're gonna fill in, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to do the nose and the mouth area. Now we're going to fill in with the light smoky slate and I'm also going to color in I just, like I said, I don't want the inner dot on the eye, but the rest of it. And I'm gonna go right over the top of like that. And the same here, I'm gonna go ahead and go around, but I do not want that dot in the eye. And I'm just basically filling in these areas where there's white, I can use the bullet tip and color, I mean the brush tip and color a lot faster, but I wanted to get the smaller sections first and I didn't wanna go outside the lines, so I used the bullet tip first. So let's fill this in. All right, so there's our bunny. Make sure that all the white spots are gray. So we're gonna go ahead and attach him onto the largest scalloped piece here. I'm gonna use my wet adhesive. Whenever I'm doing something circular, I like to use the wet adhesive. So we're gonna go ahead and go around and cover that piece. This is soft succulent cardstock. So I'm using two of the in colors, the polish pink and the soft succulent. And the plaid gingham paper there, that is from Pansy Petals. Making sure that I have a little bunny off to the side there. I'm just going to set him to the side here with his Happy Easter. Now I do want to show you that I have cut into his paws and I've just grabbed a piece of glass. I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife. I don't know if you guys own an X-Acto knife, but I love mine. And I'm gonna cut around the paw pieces here. And I'm just gonna cut in there so that I can lift up the bunny's hands. And we're gonna wedge this happy Easter like so. So it looks like he's holding it in his hands. Isn't that cute? I think so. So let's go ahead and attach some adhesive right here so that it has something to stick to and we will tuck into his hands, his happy Easter banner, press that into place like so, and I'm gonna set it to the side. Move this glass out of the way. I had this piece of glass cut from a glass maker. They have lots of sm scrap glass laying around, and I think he charged me about $5 to cut that piece of glass for me, which was well worth it. I use it whenever I use my X-Acto knife because it's like a little mat that I can use to cut gonna clean my bunny really well. Sometimes when I need to get into like little nooks and crannies, I will pick my um, 
chamois up out of my holder that I have it in a old stamp case. All right, that's the stamping. So let's get to the other parts, which are the actual box pieces. So I have a large piece here. It's five and three quarter inches by 10 and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and we are gonna score our piece. We're gonna grab our stylus that is attached onto our board here. And on the long edge, which is the 10 and three quarter inch piece, we're gonna score at three and three quarters. So we'll do right here, three and three quarters, four and three quarters, eight and one half, and nine and one half. So three and three quarters, four and three quarters, eight and a half, and nine and a half. I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm actually gonna turn it this way so that these two marks are at the top and we're gonna score at one inch all the way down and at four and three quarters. And that is all the scoring that we need to do on this piece of polished pink. So let's move the scoreboard out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and burnish on all the sides here. So I'm gonna grab my bone folder. I'm gonna start. Go on this side. And then we have those two long score marks on each of these sides. I'll do the other one. All right. So there's all my score marks. You'll probably see them a little better. Now, this is the top of my box. This is the front. This is the back. And this is the bottom. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna cut these two marks right here and we're gonna use a thick bladed scissor and I'm gonna cut on both sides of my score line and pull away that cardstock in the middle. All right, so there's my first one. I'm gonna do the opposite side the same way. So we're gonna come in here and I like to cut on both sides of the score line because to me there's bulk there when you have a lot of pieces together and I don't like there to be any bulk. So there are those pieces. So this is the front of my box. These pieces are gonna go in. These are the sides. These are the sides. See what we have so far? Now we gotta cut this top section. All right, let me explain how we're gonna cut this. So. We don't need this section or this section, and I wanna round these corners here, and I want this flap to come down. This is the tap, and this is the flap that gets tucked right here in the front, okay? This is what we're gonna see. So we don't need this piece. I'm gonna take a pencil and mark for you. We don't need this piece or this piece. And we need to trim this straight down to this big square. And the reason we're gonna trim that is because we want that flap to come from the top down. So that's why we're cutting it from the top down, okay? These are gonna be flaps in the box. So we just don't need this big piece. So I'm gonna cut on the second side of that score mark. So I don't have any score mark showing at the top of my flap here. All right, so this is what we have so far. I'm gonna put it down in case you wanna grab a picture. Hope, let me put it this way so it will fit in the camera. So this is the top of our box, the flap that's gonna be on the front, okay? These are gonna get tucked in on either side like so. 
there's the front of our box. These are gonna get tucked in. They're gonna go inside these pieces like this. And then this is gonna go on the outside, okay? So that you have these two flaps when you open. And then this is the part that's gonna get tucked in the front with our pretty gingham paper on it. I want to round these edges. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my detailed trio punch. I'm gonna use the corner rounder. And I'm just gonna make sure that this corner gets rounded. So I'm just gonna slide that in. Okay, same here. Make sure that just this piece gets rounded that one corner. So there it is. All right. That's our box. If you want to grab a picture, there you go. I'm going to grab the designer series paper and we're going to corner around that as well. Hope you grabbed your shot there. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is I'm going to move this to the side and here is the front of our box. And then this is going to be this section right here where the plaid is. So we want to corner around two ends. So we're going to put this one in. That's one. And the opposite side, we'll do that. So now I have these two rounded pieces. And then this is the front of the box. So let's go ahead and glue that down onto our box. Let's start with this top flap. So this is gonna get glued down right here, just like so. I'm gonna grab my silicone mat because I like to make gluey messes. I'm gonna grab my wet glue. And like I said, this um, paper, this gingham is from the Pansy Petals. We're gonna grab this and this is gonna get adhered to this top piece. And I like to use the wet glue because it gives me that wiggle room so I can press it into place. Now, this is the back, this is the front. This is getting a piece of gingham. And let me give you the dimensions while I am putting the glue on to this square piece. So this big piece is three and five eighths by three and five eighths square. And the small flap on the front that we corner rounded, that piece was one and one eighth by three and five eighths. So here is our box front. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and attach this piece so that there's a small border all around it. All right, now before we glue everything into place, you guys know that I do have a section in our box to separate the tea from the cookie. Here it is. This insert is four and a quarter by three and three quarters. And I'm gonna need to bring my scoreboard back out. And I'm gonna show you, we are gonna score a quarter inch in on either side, on the long side. So the four and a quarter inch is bigger than the three and three quarters. So put the four and a quarter along the top. You're gonna grab your stylus. You're gonna go a quarter inch in, which is two tick marks. So we're gonna go ahead and score there. And a quarter inch on the other side. So we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna go in two tick marks. There you go. So that is our section that's going to be inside. So now that I have scored it, I'm gonna go ahead and use my bone folder. And I'm gonna press those score marks. You can see they're pretty small because I don't need a lot of thickness. So this is what's gonna form our little wall, okay? So it's gonna get glued at the back end of our box, back there, okay? So what I need in order for it to stay glued down is I'm gonna have to have these flaps that are on the bottom glued into the box. But before I, so before I do that, I want to go ahead and put adhesive on these two 
side tabs and I want to glue those to the sides. They're going to get glued onto these sides. That way they will be out of the way when I try and adhere that section. So I'm going to take one at a time and I'm going to bring the box forward and I'm going to make sure it's nice and square. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that it's nice and square. All right, now this is gonna get glued into place right there so it will form the section for the tea bags. All right, let me make sure that my bone folder has this down nice and tight. I wanna make sure before I put the glue in there. All right, so let's go ahead and put the adhesive. We're gonna put the adhesive on these two ends. So start on one side and we want to make sure that that piece is straight because it's going to stay glued to this side here. I'm going to go ahead and hold it in place right along my box piece on that side. Now, because I'm gluing this before I glue the whole box together, I have that room to be able to push that in there really well. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now, this time I don't have room to put my fingers in there, but I do have a bone folder that I can press. And remember, I want this piece to stick to the side. So let me make sure I have a little enough adhesive on there. It kind of sat for a minute while I pushed the other one, so it might have dried. Let's get some more adhesive on there. And this is going to get attached on the side of this box. So I'm going to use my bone folder. I'm going to show you from the top here. And I'm going to press that into that corner and make sure that it's against that side. I'm gonna push that bone folder up and down, really pressing that piece into place. So there's my section for the tea bags. Now, if you're not gonna put tea bags in yours, you do not need that extra piece, but I think the tea makes the cookie even better. So now we have just the front of our box to glue together. So we wanna glue these sides so that they come over the top and they close on the side. So let's do one of those at a time. So let's go ahead and put adhesive on this side flap. And then we'll do the other one. I want to make sure that it gets right to the edge. All right, so I'm going to lay the box down and I'm going to press this into place. And I'm going to go ahead and put my bone folder in there. And in both sections, give it a nice press. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. We're gonna put adhesive on this flap. Right up to that score mark. And we're gonna hold that in place. And again, you can turn it. Put your bone folder in and give it a nice press on both of those sections. There we go. Sorry for the noise, <laughs> a little loud sometimes. All right, we're at, in the home stretch. So these are the flaps that are gonna go down. This is gonna get tucked just like so. I do wanna make sure that my pieces are not sticking out. So I'm gonna come in with my same scissor here and I'm just gonna trim my flaps in, just getting rid of any excess again so that all the pieces fit in nicely. I'm going to go ahead and trim on both sides kind of angle and we'll tear those that way when the corners meet there's not a lot of bulk there and it will help my box close a lot cleaner. All right so what I want to do now is this piece here is what is going to be laid 
along the front. It is the part that's going to grab like so on my front. So I'm going to put a piece of adhesive and I'm going to be using the um, Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm going to grab a border piece like this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cut about I don't know four pieces for these little points and I'm gonna hold my box I'm gonna bring it down and onto this piece and I'm gonna put that piece of adhesive right along that edge like so so that it stops this box when it comes down. It has a place to stop it. And I don't wanna put any adhesive above that because I don't want it to stop my box from opening, right? So that kind of gives me approximately where we're gonna be putting this adhesive on here. So what we're gonna do here is the rest of it is gonna be below the eyes of the bunny. So I'm just gonna hold on to my piece here. I'm gonna put my fingers there and I'm gonna go ahead and use my dimensionals. I'm gonna put one there over that cut piece to kind of hold it into place. And I'm just gonna work some of these dimensionals around, but I do not want to go where it is going to hinder my box. And I don't need that one in the center there, I just realized because I have my sticky right here. So let's go ahead and pull the backs off of my dimensionals. And one more. There we go. All right. We're going to pull the back off of this long piece. And we are going to stick our bunny. I'm going to put the flap down. We're gonna put our bunny on our box so that it's centered. Like so, and that holds the flap into place, as you can see. Looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think so far? Now we're gonna put our ribbon in this corner and I'm gonna use a mini glue dot for that. So I have a length of ribbon here, looks about 12 inches. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tie my bow. I do two bunny ears. And I'm going to cross, bring it through the loop at the bottom, pull, and then I will just go ahead and pull my bow until I, I'm happy with the length. That looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this down onto our piece. I'm going to grab my mini dimensionals, or not dimensionals, mini glue dots. I'm going to pull the backing off of this one. And I'm going to attach it onto my center here where the knot is. And then I'll press that into place in the corner. And then I'm going to trim the ends of my ribbon on an angle. I'm going to use my um, paper snips that I use for ribbon, which have this little dangle on the end. And I will trim those off like so. Now let's go ahead and put our tea and cookies into our box. So I'm gonna slide that out. We'll put our two tea bags in, one and the other. And then let's put in our cookie. And at first you just have to push those corners, but then it slides right in. Make sure that they are tucked into the section there of the cookie. And let's do the other one. There we go. And we're going to close the tops and tuck the flap of our box in. Just make sure that it's in there good. And there is our cookie box. I love the way it turned out. Ooh, this piece, I'm going to have to twist it a little so that it doesn't cover that bunny's face too much. That looks good to me. So what do you guys think of this cute little box? I think it's adorable. I'm very happy with it. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me put it together. Let me give you the dimensions again really quickly. The main piece, which is the polished pink colored cardstock, was five and three quarters by three and three quarters. 
The two pieces of designer series paper, the square that goes on the front of the box was three and five eighths by three and five eighths. And the piece that was on the flap is one and one eighth by three and five eighths. On the box long side, I scored it at three and three quarters, four and three quarters, eight and a half and nine and a half. And on the short side, I scored it at one inch and four and three quarters. The insert of polished pink that went in the back for the tea bags was four and one quarter by three and three quarters. And I scored that one quarter inch in on either side of the long end, which was the four and a quarter inch across the top of my scoreboard. So I scored those in a quarter inch on each end. Those get inserted at the back of our box and our cookie got put into one of our clear envelopes. I used the Easter friend bunny um, from the stamp set to do the front outside and I used the layering circles to do the circle that the bunny was attached onto and I hope that you've enjoyed this project. The color that I did the bunny was smoky slate. I used the light and the dark and I used wet glue for most of the adhesives. I did use the mini glue dot to attach the bow and I used the dimensionals to pop the circle up off of my box. Um, an X-Acto knife and a piece of glass was used to cut around my bunny's hands and some wet glue to attach that little banner into his hands. And I think he looks so cute holding on to that, doesn't he? I'm very happy with the project. I hope you are too. Please share my video to people that you think would enjoy seeing it. I would be forever grateful. Thanks for helping me grow my channel, for being part of my crew. Um, I do have a group if you are interested in joining. Um, I will send you an invite if we, um, if you make a purchase in my store automatically. And if you are looking for a demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. Um, definitely send me an email at kelly, K-E-L-L-I, at inkyhandswarmhearts.com, and I'd be happy to help you out with that as well. Thank you again for watching, and I am very grateful to have you on my channel. Um, thank you again. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!